Humans are very social beings, and a lot of people don't realize how much we need strangers and acquaintances alike to be ever-present around us in our day-to-day -day lives. There are many psychological and physical disruptions that occur when this balance is disrupted, which we'll talk about later, and it's apparent that the absence of other humans will completely disturb a person's inner homeostatic balance if the condition exists for too long. Homeostasis, from the Greek words for same and steady, refers to any process that living things use to actively maintain fairly stable conditions necessary for survival. The social side of humans and many animals is surprisingly necessary for the body's inner sense of time, appetite, and stimulus to remain normally active. But how would these change if interaction with other things was completely taken away? Thankfully for me, the experiment has already been run in the past. It is a serious psychological condition to impose upon another human being and is usually so mentally scarring that the morality of testing it has often been questioned. In 1989, a 27-year-old Italian decorator named Stefania Fellini volunteered for an experiment to study the potential effects of isolation that would inevitably affect any human sent into space for long periods of time. More specifically, the experiment focused on the effects of isolation on a person's circadian rhythm, which ties in very closely with homeostasis. The circadian rhythm consists of various mental, behavioral, and physical processes that follow a 24-hour cycle, such as staying awake during the daytime and getting sleepy when the light disappears. If your circadian rhythm is heavily offset, erratic sleeping and waking times and other physical changes will inevitably result. Fellini was placed into a 10 square foot windowless cave 30 feet below New Mexico for a whopping 130 days to prolong how much her circadian rhythm was affected. There was no light except for the lights placed in the cave, no clocks or timepieces or any other indication of the outside world for her body to adjust to. All she had was her own motivation to exercise and read books. While it may seem like the opposite would occur, time passed very quickly for Fellini because of the absence of a solid circadian rhythm. After four months in complete isolation without a single human to talk to or any sunlight to adjust to, Fellini's testing ended and she was released from the cave. Scientists recorded every small change in her physiology, and here's what they gathered from Fellini. Because of how much her circadian rhythm had been affected, Fellini's menstrual cycle had stopped and her sleep schedule consisted of staying awake for about 24 hours at a time before sleeping for 10. Her immune system was depressed and her bones had a lower level of bone calcium. She was also able to concentrate better on whatever she was doing. These results may not seem too harsh, and in reality, they aren't. Fellini was deprived of human interaction and sunlight, but she was not deprived of books or ways to decorate her living space. Her body, while affected by the absence of social stimulation, had not lacked mental stimulation. While her results, such as a near double sleep schedule, line up with the results of many other isolation tests, Fellini got the easier way out. For other volunteers, such as the ones that participated in Donald Hebb's experiment at McGill University, stimulation was not a given. This experiment was sparked by rumors of Chinese brainwashing through sensory deprivation in the 50s and 60s. Participants were placed in a sound cushioned cubicle with suits that hampered all their senses and were told to lie on a pillow while an air conditioner ran to minimize any sounds within the room. The results were drastic. Each participant became extremely reckless and even began to hallucinate vividly as their minds begged for stimulation of any kind. The experiment was cut short and the volunteers were released. The results were very close to other experiments of the same kind that had been and would be conducted. But what happened in those cubicles? What caused the brains of each participant to act so erratically? According to results gathered by BBC, the hallucinations and other worrying effects were caused by the brain misinterpreting sensory information. The part of the brain that deals with ongoing tasks, such as sensory perception, is accustomed to dealing with a large quantity of information, such as visual, auditory, and other environmental cues. But when there is a dearth of information, the various nerve systems feeding into the brain's central processor are still firing off, but in a way that doesn't make sense. So, after a while, the brain starts to make sense of them, to make them into a pattern. It is theorized that hallucinations in general are caused by a miscommunication between 
between the brain's frontal lobe and sensory cortex, which is only exacerbated by the complete loss of sensory detection. Along with this, we often determine our own emotions through the social cues of other humans and can lose that ability when none are present and our social system is firing off as usual without anything to grasp onto. Both hallucinations and emotional instability because of sensory and social deprivation are often dangerous for the human physiology. Research has proven this over and over. Humans are not able to function when isolated because how they are built to work off of each other socially and emotionally. The same goes for animals in the majority of cases. It's just not good for us to be alone. So say hello to your neighbor, greet your family with a smile, and give any human you meet the benefit of the doubt. Without them, you would be nothing.